BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Bereshit, Genesis chapter 44. Genesis chapter 44. This is lesson number E, 363, BGMC Triennial Parasha, number 42. We took a little bit of a break, um, but now we're back on the Erev Shabbat. We're doing Parasha number 42 in the Triennial Parash, Parasha. It is Genesis, Bereshit chapter 44, verse 18, through chapter 46, verse 27. We are not going to get through all that. What we're going to do is we're going to do an hour, and then uh, uh, what we don't get to during our CityGate Messianic Bible study on Tuesday night, uh, we're going to get to each line of the Torah. So right now, if you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Okay, if you're on Periscope, give us a heart. You know, we, we're, we're doing a lot of different streaming because uh, YouTube is purging people who preach the truth. Okay, if you have an opposing view, they, they gang up on you and they hate you because you have a real view. So if you ever miss us on YouTube, don't worry. We're going to be on Periscope, we're going to be on Real.Video, we're going to be online, we're going to be on all different things. So come to our website and you'll see us on different areas. Okay, let's get down to learning. So we're going to do this for one hour, okay? In chapter 44, we're looking at the fir first uh, slide there. Uh, chapter 44, Yosef's brethren uh, further tested, arrested on the charge of taking a cup. The characters are Yosef. The main characters of this particular prasha are Yosef and his brothers and the steward, the person that was helping Yosef. And the conclusion, and even in afflictions, wherein the believer thinks himself wronged, by men. He must own that God has a righteous plan and purpose. Okay, if you know that you're doing right, okay, and God throws you a curveball, and he sends you here, there, and everywhere, he puts you in the hospital, you have a heart problem like myself, okay, just understand that God has a plan for everything. As long as you stay with God, with Jehovah, and with Yeshua, and serve them, then Everything will work out, and you'll understand it in the end what the purpose was. And we learn that from Scripture, and this is what we're learning from Yosef. All right, going on to the next slide. Okay, we're in Parasha 41, uh, actually Parasha 42, but uh, chapter 40, uh, what chapter are we in? Chapter 44, the Parasha number 41 started verse 1 through 17. So let me give you the breakdown, okay, because... The chapter that we're in, chapter 44 of Genesis, has 16 parts, okay? It has 16 different parts. Ch uh, the Prasha number 41 that we're not going to go over, we're going to go over a little part, but then we're going to move on to the Prasha number 42 is verse 1 through 17. Section number 1 is verse 1 and 2. Then he ordered. Section number 2. Now, before I go any further, have your notebooks ready, Okay? What you should do is you should have a notebook, you should have your pen and pencil ready, you should have highlighters ready, because this is an education ministry. 
You're just sitting here to get, you know, sit on your butt and, well, and look at YouTube and things like that. You've come to the wrong ministry. Go, go to more guys who are going to be entertaining and, you know, tell you nice stories and blink a lot at you. Oh, he's not there anymore. Um, but, you know, you go, this is an education ministry. The reason why. And you'll learn that tomorrow in tomorrow's lesson, lesson number 710, Revelation chapter 20, part 2. We're all going to stand before Jehovah's great white throne. And you're going to be judged on what you said and what you did. The reason why I'm persevering and pushing my body to its limit to come and teach you is because we've heard a lot of people say we want the English teachings back. This is a teaching ministry. I'm not here to make you happy. I'm making you here to make you happy growing closer to Jehovah Elohim and to Yeshua. So make sure you're ready for learning because it's very important for your eternal soul. And you're going to learn about the, the eternal soul tomorrow, but we're going to get different parts of our puzzle here tonight. Okay, section number one in chapter 44 is verse 1 and 2. Then he ordered... Section number 2, verse 3 through 5. Say to them, why have you repaid good with evil? Section number 3, verse 6 and 7. Heaven forbid that we should do such a thing. Section number 4, verse 8. How would we steal silver or gold from the Lord's house? Section number 5 is verse 9 and 10. Whichever one of us has a goblet is found. Section number 6 is verse 10 through 12. He searched, starting with the... Oh, that's a very important part, number 6. Number 7 is verse 13. They tore their clothes in grief. Section number 8 is verse 14. They fell down before him on the ground. Section number 9 is verse 15 through 70, 17. Don't you know... Then a man such as myself can. Okay, it's a, those parts are very important. Okay, and you were supposed to do them last week. Just because I wasn't teaching the parasha didn't mean you stopped reading and doing your triennial parash. Sha. Okay? I learned the word parash from Ashkenazi. Sephardic is parasha. Ashkenazi is parash. Okay, so every now and then I go back to what I learned in the beginning. Okay? All right, so we have nine sections. Now for Parasha number 42, the one that we're doing today, is verse 18 through 24. 18 through 34, I'm sorry. 18 through 34, section number 10, is verse 18. Let your servant say something to you privately. Section number 11, verse 19 and 20. He alone is left, and his father loves him. Section number 12, verse 21 to 23. The boy can't leave his father. Section number 13, verse 24 to 26. Only if our younger brother is with us will we go down. Section number 14, verse 27 to 29. Something happens to him. Section number 15, verses 30 and 31. When he sees that the boy isn't with us. And then finally, section number 16, verse 32 to 34, your servant himself guaranteed his safety. Okay? So we're going to try to get through a couple of section number 10 and 11. Okay? We're going to go deep as we did five weeks ago before I took ill. The Lord had me say, take a break. Okay? So now we're coming back. Get your pens and pencil ready. Get it. If you're at home on the, if you're here in the east, eastern seaboard of, the, of America, grab yourself a cup of coffee. Don't go out and buy it because we can't buy in the Shabbat. Okay, so have a cup of coffee. Lats cooking. If you could live on coffee, then you too will end up in the hospital. Like me. <laughs> it does not. Coffee is not food. Let me tell you. It is not food. Well, please don't send me some stupid email. Food is pizza. White garlic pie, 
with extra cheese. Well, that's not going to do my cholesterol any good. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next slide. All right. Let's get down to some seriousness. You guys all have fun having. Section number nine. We're going to go back a little bit because I'm, I, everybody's going to ask me this question tomorrow anyway. Because they're going to ask, what's this divination? Did Joseph, did Joseph lie? Wait till you see the definition. Let's go back to chapter 44, verse 15 through 17. Because it's a very important understanding because Joseph does not lie because he's a Messiah-type figure beforehand. Joseph said to them, How could you do such a thing? Don't you know that a man such as myself can learn the truth by divination? Yehuda said, There's nothing we can say to my Lord. How can we speak? There's no way we can clear ourselves. God has revealed your servant's guilt. So here are my Lord slaves, both we and also the one whose possession of the cup was found. But he replied, Heaven forbid that I should act in such a way. The man in whose possession the goblet was found will be my slave. But as you, for you, go in peace to your father. Okay, now here, we're going back to verse, 40, uh, verse 15. Yosef said to them, how could you do such a thing? Don't you know that a man such as myself can learn the truth by divination? All right, now everybody's going to ask the question, hey, was Joseph lying, Joseph lying? Okay, the key to verse 15 is the word divination. Now let's, let's go to the root word. As we always do, I try to give you the root word. And once you get the root word, okay, there's prefixes and suffixes and things like that that we talked about five weeks ago. Okay? I'm going to give you the root words because once you have the root word, then the prefix and the suffix doesn't matter as much because you know what the base of the word means. Okay? So here, H5172 is nakash. Nakash. It's a chet. Nakash. It means the practice of divination divine, observe signs, learn by experience, diligently observe, practice foretelling, fortune telling, sorry, take as an omen. Okay? Now, divination is not always witchcraft. Okay? Let me go through the definition slower again. Now, the practice of divination. Okay, well, what is the practice of divination? Now, observe signs. The third definition, observe signs. Well, if you're reading your, your Bible, the Tanakh. Well, hold on a second. Observe signs. Hold your place there in Bereshit in Genesis 44. I want you to turn to Matthew 24. Verse 32 and 33. Hold your place there in Bereshit. We don't normally do this, but I'm doing this a little bit because I'm always going to get this question. Why don't we answer it? Because it's going to take three years to get back to this parasha. Okay? Because we're doing the triennial parasha. That means three years. So let's answer the question. Let's see if Yeshua talks about signs, biblical signs that are not bad, but divination of good. Because divination is nechash, it means observe signs. Now, Matthew 24, verse 32 and 33. Now, let the fig tree teach you its lesson. When its branches begin to sprout and leaves appear, you know summer is approaching. In the same way, when you see all these things, you are to know that the time is near, right at the door. Amen? Amen? Wait, Yeshua was just talking about divination. If you go to the Hebrew understanding of nakash, correct? Because he said, look at the sign of the fig tree. You watch signs of spring. Tonight, for the first time in a very long time in New York City, it's 50 degrees and I don't have to turn on the air conditioning at my house. And it's nice. It's nice. You know, you open the window a little bit. It's supposed to go down to 49 tonight in New York. And you snuggle up with your blanket. You're like, yeah, this is perfect sleeping. 
What's that a sign of? Well, it's a sign that fall is finally coming and that winter will follow fall as the seasons. So divination is not always bad. Just because the devil had stolen it and make witchcraft and all the other bad stuff doesn't mean he owns divination, okay? So go back to Genesis 44, verse 15. Yosef said to them, how could you do such a thing? Didn't you know that a man such as myself can learn the truth by divination? Amen? He's saying to them, I know my brothers. Because remember, way back a couple, you know, five, ten weeks ago, five to ten weeks ago, we were doing Yosef, and he, he's talking about his brothers, and then he told on them because they were doing something bad, then he told on them the second time, and then he had the dreams, and he told them about the dreams, and they didn't like them even more. He knows his brothers. So he's saying, don't you know that a man such as myself knows the signs? He's trying to let them know, but they don't recognize Joseph because he looks like an Egyptian. He doesn't have a big old beard. He's probably got makeup on because I've seen the hieroglyphics when I went to the land. of Egyptian hieroglyphics and things of that nature. And he didn't look. And I've seen pictures on the internet of the, the pyramids and things like that where the men... You know, don't think that men wearing makeup today is anything new. It's very old. Yosef didn't look like Yosef. Okay? But he knew them. He's trying to say to them, Do you know somebody like me? Somebody like me? Me, 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 me? Look closer, you dingbat. Jeez, Edith, what are you doing here? Okay? He's trying to let them know, but they're, they're so dense because they're like, oh, this guy in Egypt doesn't like us. And, you know, all the stuff that we talked about when they sold him into slavery, you know, those weeks ago. Okay? So, Nachash means the practice of divination, observing signs. He knows his brothers, but his brothers don't know him. So, he knows the signs. Yeshua talks about the sign of the fig tree. Okay? It's not divination. It's Nachash is observing signs, but divination today has a bad connotation, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean a negative connotation. Jehovah and Yeshua, the Son, the Messiah, says in Matthew 24, when you see all these signs, run to the hills. Run. Okay? So those are nakash. They're not, they're, they're signs. Okay, so here, as we move on, I want you to understand that, that Yosef is trying to point something out to his brothers, but they don't know who he is. Okay, he wants them to think one way because he puts the goblet in their cut in their 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 bags, and they're thinking, well, all the Egyptians are pagans, but he's really doing something what we call a double entendre. Okay. Where he's saying one thing, but he's meaning another. Okay? Now, if the brothers... Doesn't this guy sound a little bit like Joseph? Okay, it's been 13 years or more. We're going to get into that because, remember, he was 17 when he sold him into slavery. And then there's time pass. Okay? So, it's been a while. But don't you ever, know, you ever meet somebody like, you know, in the group and you're like, I know you from somewhere, okay? You, you hear their voice and you're like, I know that voice, I don't remember. And then in the middle of the night you wake up and you're like, that's who it was! Anybody, you guys ever do that? Okay, all right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, we're going to Prasha number 42 now. Okay, we're going to do section number 10, verse 18. Okay? This part is called, Let Your Servant Say Something Privately. Then Yehuda approached Joseph and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? So now, as we go along in the, in the account that would happen, Joseph put the cup, you know, the, there was a famine in the land, the children of Israel came down. Then Yosef said, don't you have, a, do you, you have a brother? Anybody left home? They told him about the brother, Benjamin, and the father. And then they, they left with the food. And they said, don't come back unless your brother's with you. 
Okay? So now they came back on Benjamin, and then he sent them away, and they put the goblet in Benjamin's pouch, and now they brought back, and now Yehuda, who said to his father, I'm going to protect them, Dad. I'll, you can take my children. You can kill me. If anything happens to Benjamin, I'm going to protect him, okay, with my life. So now, Yosef has said, okay, the rest of you can leave, but the guy who stole my cup is going to be my slave forever, okay? So now, read verse 18 again. Yehuda, then Yehuda approached Yosef and said, please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? So let's go to the synopsis section. Let me read you what I wrote, and then I'll break it down, as I've done before. We've had some very good responses to these teachings. So we're going to keep the same, the same style. I know it's been five weeks to get back into, into doing this. Okay? Yehuda, the brother who suggested that they sell Yosef to the Ishmaelim, now has to tell now has to sell himself to what he thinks is an Egyptian. A private meeting is asked for. Why? When we're reading the word in Hebrew, in context, you can see that Yehuda met with Yosef privately. We must also be reminded that Yehuda and the sons of Israel do not know at this point Yosef is the Egyptian in charge. Amen? Because if you come in the, in the middle of this part, you're like, why is Yehuda... In, it's his brother. The, he doesn't know that. Yosef looks like an Egyptian. So Yehuda's like, Please, my lord, let me talk to you privately. Okay? He suggests that Yosef, you know, remember, way back in, in Bereshit, okay, we're still in Bereshit, but a, few, a bunch of chapters before, Yehuda was the one who suggested that they sell Yosef, their brother, to the Yishma'alim. Okay? Now, the, as we say in English, the proverbial shoe is on the other foot. Okay? Now, Yehuda, who sold his brother to the Ishmaelim, is now saying, please let me be your slave forever. And now he's going to try to sell himself and let Benjamin go to his father. Okay? So, Yeh Yeh what is the lesson that we want to learn here? Okay? It's, some people call it, well, it's karma. Karma is, now that's divination. Okay? But Jehovah does keep a record. So if you do something evil, okay, especially if you're somebody who knows the word of God, and you're part of the covenant people also, or you've taken Yeshua as your Messiah, it will return to you. Okay? Because remember in the, the prophets, Jehovah says to Israel, I paid you double back for what you did to me. Okay, but now I'm going to bless you after you've, you've been paid double. Okay, so here it's a very interesting understanding. Yehuda's saying to him, please take me as your slave. But he's saying it to the brother that he sold into slavery. Okay, now here, let's go to the next slide. Let's read verse 18. Then Yehuda approached Joseph and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you like Pharaoh himself. Amen? Now in verse 18, let us understand Yehud Yehuda's leadership role among his brothers. Okay? Hold your place there in Genesis 44. Turn back to Bereshit, Genesis chapter 37. 37 Chapter 37, a couple pages back in your Bible. Okay? If you're in a Torah scroll, rewind your Torah scroll. We're blessed now because in the Torah scroll, you've got to look for it. In our Bibles, we got numbers. Okay? Chapter 37, verse 26 and 27. Because you need to get this in context to see what Jehovah is doing to Yehuda. Yehuda said to his brothers, what advantage is it to us to, if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelim instead of putting him to death with our own hands. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers paid attention to him. Amen? 
So here, Yehuda was the one that said, don't kill him, sell him. Now, so Yehovah has been with Yosef, as we've studied, and he blessed him mightily. But a lot of people that get sold into slavery around the world today are not as fortunate or as blessed. Okay? So now, Yehuda, who's the one that said, let's sell him. He's the leader of his brothers, okay, over, over the other brothers, even though he's not the oldest. He's the leader. He's been raised up as a leader by Jehovah himself. His brothers are listening to him. Now, as we go back to Genesis 44, let's look at verse 18 again, because now you start to draw a bigger picture. And you see what hopefully these teachings are teaching you is the tapestry that the Lord does. Okay, when you slow down and you study the Word of God slower, this is why the lessons here on Shabbat are back up to three hours, and I'm going to try to keep it to three hours tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. <laughs> the Lord showed me some awesome stuff in Revelation. It's great. I'm like, wow, this is great. Okay, but I love to study the Word of God because I believe it's pure. I believe once we understand these lessons, then we can apply them to our lives and be blessed. If you don't apply the lessons, it doesn't mean that you're going to be blessed, you're going to be cursed, because we all know that the Torah lives inside of us. Okay? So once you learn and you go, well, I think I should do that. I should follow this and understand it. Once you start seeing the thread, as we're, I'm trying to put together the two parts for you to hear tonight. Okay? So we just read Genesis 37. Now we're going back to Bereshit, Genesis 44, verse 18. Then Yehuda approached Joseph and said to him, and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately, and don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? So here, imagine you know yourself the stuff that you've done. Okay? Now imagine, you, you get, now this event isn't like the lady who, who said the bad things about Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, I repressed my feelings. You remember big events in your life and you never, ever forget them. I can remember like, like it was just like that, the day that my father's boss came and told me my father was dead. You remember traumatic events. You remember blessing events. Real big events in your mind, they're, they're, they, in your mind they come rapidly. So imagine you're Yehuda. Benjamin, you've made a promise to your father. You saw what your actions had destroyed your father's life. Okay, and we read that through Bereshit. Now, you're standing before what you think is Pharaoh's right-hand person. You don't know him as your brother, because he doesn't look like your brother. And you're standing there, and you're like, let me talk to you. And you're thinking, everything bad that I've done now is going to come back to haunt me. That's why you need Messiah. Because you've got to give it to God. You've got to give it to Yeshua, the Son of God, Okay? And you got to clear your slate. You got to make yourself good up and down. Because something's going to happen and you're going to like, yeah, I know why this is happening. Yep, yep. I never gave that to God. I never gave it to Yehovah. Yeah, I got to pay for it now. So imagine you're, you're, you're Yosef. You know, and you're like, hmm. Yehuda, huh? You know I can learn things from divination. Okay? But now Yehuda's standing there. In verse 18, then Yehuda approached Joseph and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you're like Pharaoh himself. Imagine. Now, remember, when we read back in Bereshit in the, chat, in the 30s, remember Yosef was like screaming, like, What are you guys doing? As he's being carried off by the Ishmaelim, he doesn't know what's going to happen. Now Yehuda is trying to 
make a deal. Okay? Now let's go to the next slide. Because we need to understand what Yehuda is doing. Because the Christian commentaries, and I have 15 different commentary books, they don't read it in context. Remember, Hebrew must be understood, especially the Old Testament, and especially in Torah, must be understood in context. Because that's why there's no chapters and no verses. You read a, a quatrain. You read a panel. Okay? So when you read the panel, you're like, oh, I understand what's going on. But here, when you, you narrowly focus and you have not read the other stuff, you don't understand. Okay? So here, let's read verse 18. Then Yehudah approached Yosef and said, Please, my lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? So let's take a look at the word approach, because we need that. Okay? Approach is H5066. 5066. The root word is nagash. Nagash. It means, number one, to draw near, approach. Number two, to draw or come near of humans. Number three, sexual inter intercourse. Okay? I don't think Yehuda is saying, can I have sex with you? He's not a gay man. He's married and he's got children. Okay? So he's not a fag. Okay? So next, reading it in context, what is he saying? Can I come and talk to you privately? Okay? He comes to him and he approaches Joseph. He says, can I talk to you? Okay, Nagash. So you read it in context. You read it even in context of verse 18. Not even the previous other 17 verses. So here, Yosef is set apart because he's a leader. His brother comes to him, and the brother doesn't know he's his brother. Okay, he's a big leader, or as they would say in, the, in Yiddish, he's a big macha. Okay. My mother used to say he's a big, making a big macha. Okay? So he's, he's, a, he's an elevated person, very important person in a, in, a, in a huge empire called Egypt now because remember, Egypt has now had the only one with food and they've gotten a lot of money and a lot of power. So here, Yehuda is saying privately, he's trying to give Yosef the respect, but he says, can I speak to you privately? All right, let's go on to the next part. Let's go to the next slide. Verse 18 again. Then Yehuda approached and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you like Pharaoh himself. Amen? Now here, let's read what is written on the slide. When a very de delicate meeting is held in private, it allows for each person to be more honest. When a leader is around their subordinates, one must put on a certain amount of showmanship, especially if the perception of that leader is one of immovability. This may be one of the reasons Yehuda asked for a private meeting. Amen? Now let me explain to you what I wrote. Yehuda is a, just one, a son of the, 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 the Israel, but he doesn't have a country. Okay? Now he's talking to this big leader who is the right hand of Pharaoh, and Egypt is an empire. Okay? So he asked for a private meeting. Now, this is a leadership understanding. Okay? And this is also ties together with Matthew 18, where Yeshua says, if you, you had a problem with your brother, go to him privately. By going to somebody privately, it's just you too. Sometimes when you're having a meeting that is not private, the person who is in charge has to have a certain air about him. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if the guy is always a very staunch person or immovable in meetings and very mean all the time, he's, and subordinates, people under him, are around, then 
What happens is that person must keep on that show. By calling for a private meeting, he's allowing Yosef to be hopefully more approachable. Because if Joseph, Joseph, you know, the, the, who he thinks is the Egyptian, he doesn't know him. All he knows is the guy, you know, said, you, you stole my cup. And I know divination. So he's thinking, oh my goodness, what, what's going on? So now he's like, can I meet, can I talk to you privately, please? Please, please, please. You know, he's trying to, because here, Yosef's got his servants. He's got interpreters, so he's got people around. So now Yehuda, the reason I'm doing this is because the commentaries are like, you know, he just whispered in his ear. I don't think so. That's not the context of the Hebrew. It's not the context of the Hebrew. It is more understood that he's trying to get a private meeting in a different room so that he can talk to Yosef, man to man, or humble him. Yosef will probably, hopefully, be a little bit more understanding and private. All right? Now let's go to the next slide. Let's read verse 18 again. We're still on verse 18, like I said. We're taking it slow. Hopefully you're learning and drawing closer to the Lord and learning lessons for leadership. Because let's, before going to the next slide, let's go back one slide. This is why Yeshua says in Matthew 18, go to your brother privately. You got a problem with him? That way you two people can talk it out privately. Because if somebody has to always put on, well, you're a jerk. You know, and they're always mean, or they're always looking like this, and, you know, we've got the Clint Eastwood s stare, okay? This is why Yeshua says, go to him privately. Man to man, woman to woman, go to them privately. So, here, it's the same understanding. Now, let's go back to verse 18 again. Then Yehuda approached and Yosef and said, Please, my Lord... Let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? So here, the next part that we need to understand is he says, please, my Lord. So Yehuda is showing, first of all, great respect. He does not use the word please as we would today. Let's go in to what the word please. See, in the, in, the, in the English it says please. It is H4994. It is the Hebrew word, root word, is na. It means, number one, pray. Now, please. Number two, use an entreaty or an exhortation. So he's like saying, he's praying and saying, He's not just saying please, like in the modern Hebrew you would say bavakasha, please. Okay? He's more saying nah, he's, he's like, he's praying, like, ah, uh, please. Okay? It's a prayer, sort of, in a way. Now, let's go to the next slide because we need the two parts and then we're going to discuss it. Let's read verse 18 again because this is very interesting. Then Yehuda approached Joseph and said, please. My Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? Now in this part, we need to understand what Yehuda said. He says, Lord, lowercase l, H113. He says, Adom. Now what does Adom mean? Firm, strong, Lord, lowercase l, master. Also by calling him Adon, he is placing himself below Yosef as his slave. Okay? So now, even mentally, Yehuda has already sold himself to Yosef. He's saying, my Lord. Okay? So now he is already done by the words he's using, he's praying that Benjamin, Benjamin can be let go. I am your servant. He's saying, 
Don't, you know, please, Adam. Okay? Now, Yosef, who is his brother, now remember, it doesn't say that there's translators, but before in the other passages, there was always a translator. Okay? So one would surmise that the same situation is going on because Yosef is not revealed to his brothers, and he will ultimately reveal himself, and he will tell all of his servants to leave. So he talks to his brothers in, in their language, in the Hebrew. Okay? So here, once again, on that same slide, Lord is H113, Adam means firm, strong, Lord, master. Okay? So here, now let's read verse 18 again. Then Yehuda approached Joseph and said, Please, na Adam, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Okay? So he prays, and he's elevating Yosef, who he thinks is an Egyptian, above himself in a much higher way. He's saying, Adon, meaning I'm your slave. Okay? He has already sold himself. So imagine the mental status of Yehuda. Okay? It's very important because that's why we read the other part of Genesis before, Bereshit before. Yehuda was the one who sold Yosef to the Yishma'alim. Now, Yehuda is saying to Yosef, he's calling Yosef Adom, meaning his master. Now comes all the dreams. Imagine what was going on in Yosef's mind. You know, remember he had those two dreams. His brother's bowing down to them, that they're going to serve him. So now everything is happening to Yosef also. But his brother is saying to him, Adom, he puts himself underneath Yosef. Okay? Now let's go to the next slide. We're still in verse 18. We're moving along great here. It's now taking 40 minutes, and we're still on one verse. No, we did the other verse, right? We did the divination. Verse 18. Then Yehuda approached Joseph and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you like Pharaoh himself. Amen? Now, Yehuda says, let your servant. He's letting Yosef know by this, this phrase that he is his servant already. Okay? He's allowing Yosef this information. Okay? He's saying, I'm yours. You didn't have to pay for me. Please let my brother Benjamin go. It's a very important phrase for the rest of this chapter. Okay? For the rest of the chapter, you need to understand what Yehuda did. Okay? Now, here, verse 18 again, Then Yehuda approached Yosef and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say something to you privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? So let's see what the word servant is. Okay? Servant is H5650. It's the Hebrew root, root word abed, meaning slave, servant. Number two, manservant. Number three, subject. Okay? So here, he's not saying, I want a job like manservant. He's saying, I, because with Adam, you now go from manservant to slave. Because Adon means master. Okay? So here, then you come to the conclusion of Ebed by putting the two Hebrew words together. Adon means master. Now with the second word, servant, Ebed, you don't, you don't go to servant anymore. You go to slave because he called him master. And by calling him master, you're going to do what your master tells you. By calling him boss, then, you're, then he's your man. Then you'd be said, I'm a manservant. So then you can come to the conclusion that Yehuda right there is saying, I pray to you, my master, let me be your slave instead of my brother, Benjamin. Okay? He's pleading, but most of all, 
he's giving himself to be a slave to Yosef. Now let's take this a little further. Yehuda, the one that Yeshua comes from, I didn't love the tribe of Yehuda. Here, the brothers, the brother is giving himself as a servant to his master. Do we give ourselves to be an ebed to our master, Yeshua? Okay? The, if you're an ebed, a slave, you don't tell your master what to do. So the master says, Yeshua said, do this in remembrance of me, the Pesach. Does the body of Messiah do the Pesach on the right day? Do those who call themselves Christians, who are adopted into the Hebrew family, do Pesach at all? And they call themselves slaves, okay? So here, Yehuda is saying, Let me be your slave. Okay, he's saying everything like that. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Then Yehuda approached Joseph and said, Please, my lord, Adom, let your servant, Ebed, say something to you privately. privately. And don't be angry with your servant, for you're like Pharaoh himself. Amen? Now, here he's, we use the word privately. He says something privately. Okay? Now, that's sort of not a great translation. Because here, the word privately, it's a very interesting word. In some translations, it says ears. It's H241. It's a Hebrew word, ozen, meaning ear, part of, your, part of the body. Number two, ear as an organ of hearing. Number three, to uncover an ear to reveal, the receiver of a divine revelation. Amen? So in context, it's not just, he's not doing it in open where everybody else is going to hear it. In context, he asks, he approached and says, he's not just, can I whisper something in your ear? No. It's more of the last part. Receiver of a divine revelation, meaning separation, not just in the ear, but the separation from other ears. Okay, in context, he's calling himself, he's calling him Adom. He's calling himself, Yehuda's calling himself Abed, a slave. And he's saying, let me speak something in your ears privately. Okay, when you read it in the context of the Hebrew, he wants to separate from the others to have a private meeting with Yosef, who he doesn't know is his brother. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Verse 18 again. I think this is the last one on 18. Then Yehuda approached Yosef and said, Please, my lord, Adom, let your servant, Ebed, say something to you privately. Don't be angry with your servant. For you are like Pharaoh himself. Amen? So here he says, don't let your anger burn against your servant. Yehuda doesn't know that Yosef put the cup in Benjamin's sack. So he's saying, we didn't steal it, something happened. He's saying, don't be angry with us, something happened. Okay? Don't be displeased with my boldness saying, I want to talk to you privately. And he said, and he's saying, He's, let me, can I talk to you, please? And he's asking him by saying, don't be angry with your servant. Be patient with me because I'm going to try to explain something to you because, you know, maybe you're next to Pharaoh, right? And you have authority with him. And he's saying, can I speak privately with, with you, right? Because you have the object to show mercy or release him. Okay, so here, let's go on to the next slide. 
Let's go on the next slide. We're going to now try to do a little bit. For, we're going to go for another 10 more minutes. Like I said, each of these teachings are now only going to be an hour. Okay? So now we're going to move on to section 11. Whoo! For two verses. We almost took 50 minutes. That's, hey, if you're looking to rush through the Bible, this is not the ministry you want to follow. You want to get deep like this? I love, I, I love sitting around with people that know the Word of God and listening to them going, yeah, that's, that's good. Oh, I didn't look at it that way. And you put this, oh, yeah, well, wow, wow, wow. And that, and that goes with this, and this goes with this, and this goes, and then you all draw closer to God, and you get blessed. Amen. Verse 19 and 20, section 11. My Lord asked his servants, Do you have a father or brother? We answered, My Lord, we have a father who's an old man and a child of his old age, a little one whose brother is dead. So that of his, mo so that of his mother's children, he alone is left, and his father loves him. Amen? Now let's go to the synopsis page. After asking for Yosef's ear, Yehuda reminds Joseph of their previous encounter. Yehuda knew that Yosef was a very busy man who was feeding the world. But there was a worldwide famine, and Yehuda did not want to be thought of someone he was not. Amen? Okay, well, let's break that down a second. What, you know, you're, you're reading this, and you're like, why am I reading this again? Okay, so here, why is, why, the first level is why is Yehuda telling Yosef this? Because remember, and it needs to be put into context, that there is a worldwide famine. Okay? It's nine years, there were the seven years of good, and there's second year of the famine. Okay? So Yehuda's trying to tell Yosef, you know, he's trying to remind him because he saw thousands and thousands and thousands of people, right? There's a worldwide famine. Why, you know, why, why is Yehud even there? Because there was no food in Canaan, right? Canaan? So here, all the people from Canaan had come to buy food for themselves. If they were buying food, and Yehovah said there was going to be a worldwide famine, Yosef, Yehuda's like, I've got to remind this guy that we did what you told us to do. You asked us a question, we answered it honestly. I'm, re I'm being kind. I'm showing you respect. I'm calling you my, my Lord. I'm saying, maybe you're mixing me up with somebody else. Okay? Same that you do with the Lord. Respectfully, Yeshua says, pray without ceasing. Why are you praying without ceasing? Because you're reminding the Lord. Not that the Lord needs to be reminded, but you want to remind the Lord. Because there's a couple of billion people on the planet. And the Lord's kind of old. No. <laughs> so here, let me just get a drink. The first layer of section 11 is a reminder. It also calls to us, the reader, to remind us of what went on. When God does something again, he's trying to draw your, your attention back to the event. He's now going to show you a different aspect of that event. The same thing goes in our lives. Let's say you're going through an event a second time or a third time. You're going through it with the same person. That means both of you need to learn something or something is going to be changing. There's going to be some education on both avenues. Okay? Now let's go to the next slide. Verse 19. We're going to do just verse 19. My Lord asks his servants, do you have a father or a brother? Okay? Amen? So the first thing that we notice is once again, Yehuda is placing himself and his brothers below Yosef the Egyptian. Okay? See, when you're in sin, as the children of Israel were, 
you are a servant to what you think is a pagan. Let's slow down. Why is there a famine in the land? Well, it is God's plan. But God said, if you follow me and you do what I told you to do, you will never go hungry. There will never be a famine in the land. So the first thing we notice is Yehuda is saying, and his brothers, because look at verse 19, my Lord asks his servants, plural, do you have a father or a brother? Okay, so now he's not only saying servant, ebed, in the, in the English here, it is servants, plural. That means his brothers. So here, why are he and his brothers there in the first place? Because they sold their brother Yosef, although it was God's plan. He already foreknew it. But when you're going through a trial, you got to think about maybe something that you did. Okay? Why is it happening? I asked myself the same question here recently when I took ill. Well, the Lord wanted to raise up other people. Because I was like saying, no, 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 no. So he said, okay, I'll make you sick. Now you've got to raise up other people because it's not me that I want you worshiping at all. That's why my name is not on the ministry. It's Beth Goim, Messianic Congregation. I want to draw you closer to my king, Elohim, Jehovah, Yeshua, and the Ruach. I don't want ever for this ministry to stop teaching the world, the Torah, and of Yeshua. Okay? So here, Yehuda is placing himself underneath Yosef, his brother, as it was foretold. But why are the children of Israel underneath what they think is a pagan? Because any time we do not follow the word of God, God is going to put you below. And it says that later on in Devarim 28. It says that later on in Viagra Leviticus 26. And, you, and if you follow the word of God, he says, you're never going to be below. You're always going to be above. And he then also says, if you don't follow, I'm going to make you a servant. So here we have the start of that. Yehuda is saying, we are servants. Okay, so he's placing himself under Yosef. Verse 19 again, same slide. My Lord asks the servant, do you have a father or a brother? So once again, we hear Yeho Ye Yehuda saying, my Lord. Once again, he is placing himself by that phrase, and he's using that dawn again. Once again, Ye Yehuda shows servitude to Yosef by using the word Adon. We can surmise from the word Adon that his brothers were not in the meeting. Okay? So he separated. That's why he, I made that point. Because a lot of the Christian commentaries do not, they think that he's doing it in the room. No. He's calling a master. And the, okay, last one. I'm going to go for another three more minutes and then we're going to close this on verse 19. Once again, we're going through the City Gate Messianic Bible study on Tuesday nights at 7.30. They're all on the website. We spent now Five weeks on Genesis chapter 6? Six? Six. Six. Oh, okay. So we're going slow. We're going to go through the whole Torah line by line pretty much. It's really cool, really good, if you like it. Okay, last part. Verse 19, my Lord asked his servants, do you have a father or a brother? Okay, so here his servants... Once again, the term ebed is used. He's saying his servants. Now, he's not only placing himself, he's placing the rest of the children of Israel under Yosef, who they think is an Egyptian, as servants, as slaves to the Egyptian. The term us primarily is used for slaves. Now, Yehuda reminds... The Egyptian saying, do you have a, f a father or a brother? Remember, 
He doesn't know he's talking to Yosef. And he says, you asked me a question and I told you the straight, honest answer. I didn't have to. But you asked me a question, I answered it honestly. Why would I steal your cup? He's trying to make that something happened in this cup. Something. He doesn't know what happened. He doesn't know Yosef did it himself or he had his servant do it. Now he's trying to get out of it. But remember, he sold his brother into slavery. God remembers what you did. All right. We're going to close on that part. So I don't want to start another section. Once again, I'm going to try to keep these teachings to one hour every hour of Shabbat. So I bid you an amen. An amen. An amen. Yeah, but I could call you Hova. Varish Yehovah. Panavaleka vikoneka Yisra Yehovah Panavaleka viyasem laka Shalom May Yehovah bless you and keep you. May Yehovah make his face shine on you and show his favor. May Yehovah lift up his face toward you and give you his shalom. Life, fullness, and peace. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord of the light of the world. And everybody said, Amen! Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org that's b-e-t-h-g-o-y-i-m dot org and click on the donate button you do not have to have a paypal account to donate all you need is a debit card once again thank you very much for listening to the remnants call If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. 
After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, Many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.